Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge. Welcome to this video. And now, a few weeks ago, I did a short video, fairly short video, about this uh, Eurorack setup that I've got over here, um, consisting of the Waldorf KB37 Eurorack enclosure and keyboard, something I really, really like. Um, and also, the video was about the modules that I've got in it right now. Um, these are the Behringer System 100 modules, and I really like those. Uh, they sound fantastic. And I am going to do a little bit more of an in-depth sort of like look at those um, in the coming weeks. Um, but when I posted that video about this setup, it was apparent that I had a slight tuning issue with the VCO module, the 112 module. Um, you know, if I held down a note and then I tuned it, uh, everything was fine. There was no sort of like serious drift or anything. Uh, but what I, what I found was that uh, as you, I went up one octave, two octaves up, or one octave, two octaves down, uh, that the tuning became worse and worse and worse. Um, now, it definitely got better after a lot of warm up, but uh, it was still not fantastic. Now, after I posted that video, I had quite a few people get in touch with me and say that they had similar issues with their module um, and uh, they were concerned about it. So I decided at that point to do a little bit of research on the internet. I did a bit of an internet search. I found a very interesting conversation going on on the gearsluts.com forum. Um, there were a bunch of people there that had this issue. They were discussing how to resolve it. Um, they were talking about reconfiguring their modules um, because there were these little sort of like uh, trim pots on the back here that you can, uh, you can configure the, the tuning of the modules. Um, someone had done that uh, very successfully, um, and it, it sounded like there was quite a few people that had a problem with their specific uh, VCO modules. So I decided that I was going to get in touch with Behringer about it, but, but before I did that, I wanted to do some tests of my own uh, to see how bad the problem was, you know, try and sort of like put it into numbers as to what I was seeing with my module and seeing uh, what Behringer thought about it. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is a spreadsheet of, of tests that I did. I mean, basically the test was just one test. I held down the A4 note, having switched on the whole unit from cold, held down an A4 note and immediately tuned it to 440 hertz. Um, and then every 15 minutes for the next four hours, I played that note again recorded the frequency that I got, and I also played one octave, two octaves below, and one octave, two octaves high, and recorded those frequencies. So I was recording five frequencies every 15 minutes for four hours. Um, and now I'll show you on the screen um, a, the, the spreadsheet of, of the numbers that I got, but I'll also show you a couple of graphs, uh, which will try and hopefully illustrate uh, the problem that I was having. Right, so here's the spreadsheet, lots of numbers. I won't bore you with those. I'll just bore you with the graphs instead. Uh, we won't worry about that graph. That's just showing the raw data. It's difficult to actually see what's going on with that graph. Let's look at this graph. Uh, hopefully this explains a little bit better what's going on. So these five lines relate to the five frequencies, the five notes that I was recording the frequencies of. Um, the gray one here in the middle is A4. Uh, then we got uh, the yellow one is A3, the blue one is A2, and then up here we've got red A5, and then A6. And what we've got here along the x-axis is time in minutes, so you can see 15, 30, 45, so that's one hour, all the way out to 240, that's four hours. And the uh, y-axis, the scale here, is cents, uh, so 100 cents is one semitone. So Initially, I tuned A4 to be exactly 440 hertz, um, and this scale here is showing the divergence away from what I expect the tuning to be. So the grey line here starts off at zero because it was exactly tuned properly. There was no divergence away from 440. But as you can see, after 15 minutes, it's kind of leapt up quite a lot. It's leapt up by about 170 cents, that's uh, approaching two semitones uh, above uh, the initial frequency that I tuned it to, which is actually an awful lot. It's common to see VCOs jumping around either up or down in terms of frequency within you know a very short space of time of, of powering them on. That's just it's normal with analog circuits. Um, but these are jumping up by a, a quite a large amount, I have to say. Um, 
So that's the grey line, jumps up, and then it just continues to climb, but that, you know, the rate of climb is getting slower and slower and slower, as you can see, until it kind of levels off. Uh, and it's the same with the other frequencies, the other notes that I played. Initially, if we look at like uh, A3 here, uh, it's way lower than it should be. Um, it's uh, um, 100, 150, that's 150, I couldn't believe that, yeah, 150, that's one and a half semitones out uh, as soon as you switch it on. It gets an awful lot better. It actually goes from negative actually to positive 150, so it actually doesn't get a lot better. Um, but, you know, it, it shifts an awful lot in that first 15 minutes. But basically what you can see with all of these five lines is they, they're kind of converging. And that's what you want to see. Uh, this is showing the divergence from expected frequency. And what I'd like to see with these lines is that they all end up coming together, converging together. Uh, and that means that they are all the same amount out of tune. It doesn't matter that they're they're way up here as opposed to down here because I can always just turn the tuning, you know, the master tune dial on the VCO module and bring them back in line with what I want. Um, it's the fact that they are never actually coming together. You know, after an hour of, of warming up, uh, they pretty much stay the same amount apart for the rest of my test. At four hours here, um, a5 is actually 15 cents out uh, compared to what it should be and A6 uh, is 30 cents out and, and 30 cents is a lot uh, of, of you know being out of tune um, and if you want to hear what um, 15 cents and 30 cents sound like out of tune I'll play you some tones now so I'll play you a bass tone uh, which is actually um, a3 exactly tuned properly and then I'll play you A4 uh, but 15 cents out of tune and you can hear there that you know it's definitely not in tune and now if I add another octave above it but 30 cents out of tune you get this sound and that to me you know that is significantly out of tune um, it's, it's, you know, it's not really usable uh, other than within a, you know, a very you know, small octave, say, a single octave range. Uh, so that's the situation that we have with this um, module as it stands. A massive divergence um, at the beginning. Clearly as it warms up, that divergence narrows, uh, but it never narrows enough to make the module usable over two or three or four or more octave spread. So I ended up having a bit of a sort of like a two-way, you know, conversation over email with, with one of the guys at Behringer um, about the issue with my 112 module. Um, and it basically turns out that while they were in the sort of like doing the initial manufacturing run of these modules, um, maybe they were like midway through it, they discovered that there was an issue um, with some of the components they'd used, the tolerances of those components and, and the sensitivity to temperature of those components, which meant that the scaling was out. Um, and certainly, as you can see from my graph, the scaling changed quite a lot over, over time. Um, so it was fixed straight away as soon as they realized it in manufacturing. So all new units that come from Beringer now uh, will be fixed and won't have this issue anymore. So that's really good news. However, there will be people that have bought um, like me, uh, a module that does exhibit this issue. And there is a, you know, a slight possibility there are still some of these modules out there with retailers that, that have uh, the old design. So I'm, I'm waving this thing around here. This is actually my um, 112, my original 112. Um, I've got another 112 here in my rack. Uh, this one does not exhibit the problem at all. This, is, this has got the new design to it. 
Um, I've looked at them, uh, you know, on the back, and, and there's some very, very tiny differences. Uh, but I can't really tell what they are, but there are some tiny differences in terms of what's going on in the circuits here. Um, maybe there's some more inside there. I'm not, certainly not going to take it apart and try and pretend that I know what I'm looking for. Um, but there are some differences. Um, but I've rerun my tests on uh, this latest 112 module. Uh, and just for comparison purposes, I'll show you now uh, the same graphs as before, but with this one, so you can see how uh, there is an improvement over my original 112. Right, so the, this first graph I'm showing you, this is the old module, my original old module, uh, just so that you can see for comparison what it looks like. Um, this is the divergence away from uh, intended frequency, as you can see here. And this is the latest module, the new module. Uh, and as you can see, it's just completely, completely different. Such a huge improvement. The scale is exactly the same. So we're going from uh, plus 300 to minus 200 on this y-axis. It's the same scale, plus 300 to minus 200. Uh, but as you can see, the divergence um, is not as dramatic in those first 15 minutes. Um, and you can see how close those lines are to each other as we go forward. And that's absolutely fine, the fact that it's up here and not down here at zero, because all I need to do is just turn the control, you know, the tuning control on the front um, and, and bring everything down to being in tune and it will continue to be in tune as we go through. Um, and I can see here that, you know, it's really quite usable after 15 minutes, but certainly uh, I would say after 45 minutes, that's when I would really start using this module in anger. I'd leave it to warm up for 45 minutes, uh, maybe less. Um, and then, you know, there's a tiny amount of drift, overall drift. Um, but, you know, this is a voltage controlled oscillator. You know, that's, that's, that's what you expect. That's what gives it its character and its charm. Okay, so I realize I haven't played the new module for you, so you can hear for yourselves the difference, but trust me, just looking at those graph results, uh, trust me that the difference between this old one and the new one is like night and day. Uh, it really is. Um, and it's also really great to see that Beringer was so proactive in identifying the issue, uh, coming up with a new design and implementing it so fast. Um, so, you know, all new modules that are being uh, manufactured will have that fix in and have had that fix in for quite a while. If you do have an old module um, that displays the same issues that my one here has, then I guess you've got two choices. You can either, if you're feeling brave, feeling up to it, recalibrate it. Uh, that will certainly make it far more usable, um, but it won't get rid of that temperature sensitivity, that initial temperature sen sensitivity when you can see that there is that divergence uh, over the course of the first 30, 45, even 60 minutes. Um, or you can get in touch with your retailer and discuss with them about getting a replacement unit. That's entirely up to you. Um, I'm really looking forward to using the new module. Um, I'm going to come up with a video in the next couple of weeks that's going to go through the six different modules that I've got here, um, go through them in terms of their features, their functionality, uh, and hopefully play some nice music with it. Uh, and that's my first issue, is I've got to actually come up with some new music and record it using these modules. So that's what I'm working on right now. So it'll be a couple of weeks before that video comes out. Until then, as always, thank you very, very much for watching.